hello there welcome to my youtube channel saint nightingale in this tutorial video i'm going to be showing you how to cut and sew this chef uniform and apron let's go all right so first off um my brown paper is on the floor and what i'm trying to do right now is to divide this into two equal halves and that's what i've just done i took my ruler and then i drew out that straight line and the next thing for me to do is to mark the shoulder measurements the shoulder measurements i'll be working with is 18 inches divided by 2 that's 9 inches and i went to mark the depth of the um, arm o, which is 9 inches and then i went further to mark the um, bust measurement which is 22 inches divided by 2 um, that's 11 inches and that's what i've just marked so let's go back to um, marking the shoulder measurements right now so i picked up the ruler to connect the dots or the lines to the um, part that has the markings for the arm o. afterwards i went on to mark the width of the um of the opening for the neck um, which is seven inches divided by two that's 3.5 inches then the depth of the neck as well is four inches and that's what i marked on that straight line so i'll be using my pencil to um, mark that area so that in case i need to make any modification i can um, just use that and you won't have so much of a marker flying around on this pattern so um, what i'm trying to do at this point right now is to complete the arm o um pattern and that's what i've do just done now i will also be inserting the ammo curve much later so um the full length of the chef uniform that i'm working with is 30 inches and that's what i've just marked now shoulder downwards 30 inches i've marked that straight line so um i would now proceed to marking the slope for the shoulder remember i mentioned that the um wideness of the neck is 3.5 inches Remember what we're doing is imagine this is unfold already and the reason why I'm cutting this side first is because um, the right hand side on this view is different from the right, um, left hand side in terms of the pattern so let's just proceed so I'm drawing out the slope for the shoulder now and like I mentioned I'll use a pencil to draw out the depth of the neck area which I would definitely change with to a marker much later in this um, tutorial video you can also see that i have drawn out i mean the um, bust waist and hip area everything i'm making is of a 22 inches i mean on one side right um, divided by two that will give me 11 inches so i've marked 11 inches for the bust hip, waist and hip measurement um, remember when i say 22 inches that's um, divided by two already the total bust waist and hip measurement is 44 inches but then this is already like divided into four places and that's why we have 11 inches just so that you can note that so i'm going to use my pencil now to um, mark this um, um, depth remember it's not a smooth depth it's going downwards if you remember the picture that i showed you ella it's going downwards and that's what i've just done there and also going to mark the um, curve for the arm hole as well as um, the one going towards the shoulder blade and that's it so after doing this i'm going to just proceed to um, labeling this left this is the left side from this our view that we can see right here so i'm going to call this left after doing this i'll cut this out and then we'll now cut the pattern for the right hand side or the right side so as you can see i won't be cutting the depth for the neck just yet let's proceed to cutting the one for the right side so the first thing i did on this part is to draft out the full measurement for the chef uniform which like i mentioned is um 30 inches and that's what i've done i will just draw the straight line to complement that and so we can proceed to um doing other things on this brown paper afterwards i placed the um left side that i had cut but i turned it um, over just so that i can get an accurate measurement um to work with for um the arm all so that i mean what i had cut out for the um, left side is also the same as the right side also what i'm trying to do right here with my pencil is to um, get the um, center point for this um, brown paper that i'm working with right so i'm making use of pencil as well because i don't want to have too many shadings on this paper i will definitely still change back to the marker um, once i'm clear with this also um i placed like i said placed the left side turned it you can see i flipped it to the other side um so that i can cut out an accurate arm hole so that it's i mean as accurate as what i cut on the 
um, left side. I'm just using this as a cloning um, technique or cloning. I'm just cloning this um, pattern right on the on the fabric, so I don't have to start measuring and cutting again. So we're done with that now. I'll just tape down with my paper tape so that I mean the edges are secured. And then afterwards, after doing this, I will now proceed to um, the other um, element of this design. Remember that the shoulder measurement that we're working with is 18 inches divided by two, that's nine inches. And that's what I've proceeded to mark on that part. Um, remember also that the wideness of the neck area is um 3.5 inches on fold i mean times two that's seven inches so um we'll just mark that at that point i'm also placing the paper on this as well so that i'm um, sure that what i've marked is accurate so i'll just mark it so that i can see it properly i remember i also said that the left pattern is going from the right pattern so that's why we're duplicating this effort so we're done with this now um the next thing is from i mean I'm taking two inches away now from that midpoint that I've done, which is, I mean, two inches is what we have when we have measured 11 inches um, width in terms of the wideness of the of the pattern. Remember, I had placed the left block on this and um, just so that I can get it. So I'm going to take out two inches so that this, I mean, mirrors what we have on the left side. Although this is not what we're using, but just let's have this like an identical um pattern for the right side so i've drawn that out now i will now i mean i'm picking picking up my measuring tape to be sure that i have 11 inches and yes i have 11 inches so we're good um the next thing i'm going to be doing right now is to um measure the depth of i mean this right side right so the depth that i'm going to be working with is five inches remember i cut four inches for the one for the left side but for the right side i'm going to be making of five inches right then i went outwards by 4.5 inches from that point that i marked 11 i mean the part that carries the um right measurement for the left and on the right side so from that second line towards the um right side is what i marked four inches away from it which will sit um properly from where the shoulder blade of the other side starts from right so i'm going to use my marker now to shade the line so you can see it properly on that side all right so i'm um, drawing the marker on that line so that you can um see it clearly so after i'm doing this after right after doing this i will proceed to um the other measurements or other um, elements of this which is the depth of um the neck area like i mentioned i'm using five inches so i went um outwards and marked another five inches then i placed my uh, measuring tape again to be sure that i'm marking on the 4.5 line so that's 4.5 away from that part and i marked it then i'll go upwards again and then use my curve ruler now to connect the um 3.5 that you have on that line downwards to meet that five inches that i have on that straight line that you can see there and let's just quickly do that so i've zoomed in closely so you can see what i'm doing properly then i'll just um use my free hand to connect the um, markings that i had made on that 4.5 inches to meet where we have the five inches on that line just see me um follow through what i'm doing you see what i'm doing to understand and there you have it so i'll just use the um cover like again to just make this um as smooth as possible so we're good with this now um the next thing that we're going to be doing right now is to now connect that line downwards you can see i've changed the camera position so you can see the tip of that so i'm going to be taking 2.5 inches away from that first line i mean that line that is marked black not the pencil line now i'm placing this on the on the pattern so that i can just be sure because this the one on the right is going to be overlapping on the one on the left so yes 2.5 inches to confirm and that's what we're going to be taking out so i'm going to mark 2.5 inches and then use my long ruler to connect the line from the upper part downwards So 
so i've connected that line and our right side is ready so i will just label this right so that um it's easy for you to identify um where this pattern is remember i said that i marked that area on the left side with pencil so i'm going to be using the marker to darken that out but then let's zoom in a bit right i'm going to go um a bit lower than what is there right i'm going to use my um ruler to go a bit lower so that it matches what we have on the right side which is five inches for the depth i'm going to be changing this from four inches to five inches but quickly let's just cut this out um away from the floor and we're done so let me go back to the left side so you can see what i mean by that you can see that that is already coming higher than normal i've labeled that right you can see that that's coming higher than um, the other side so i'm just going to go downwards by one inch and use my pencil to mark that out and then just trim out that part that is um, bulging out and we're good to go so you can see this looks better so i'm going to place on the fabric now and trim out um, I mean cut out the pattern the back pattern is the normal basic bodies I mean the full length remains the wideness of the neck still remains and that's that so this is what we have um when preparing this or when I prepared this I left half an inch sewing allowance upwards one inch sewing allowance on the right side and on the left side so my hand is showing you that I used half an inch sewing allowance on that part so that you can see using my hand half an inch sewing allowance as well on the sides one inch sewing allowance on the other side as well one inch sewing allowance this fabric is sitting on the right side so this is not the wrong side and that's because of the closing i want to do on the tip as well i use one inch sewing allowance because when i flip it i'll be using half an inch um finishing so now look at me i'm taking out one inch from that point and that's because once i'm done sewing i'm going to flip over and tuck it in to do a shirt finishing where i mean i won't be needing any form of weaving at the end of the day so let's quickly cover the shoulders and then cover the one for the sides as well so let's quickly sew this together So I'm done with that. The next thing I'm going to be doing is to um, sew the sides. Remember I said one inch sewing allowance, which is what I have taken away from this. So I'm sewing this downwards as well and I'm going to do the same for the right side. So the finishing I mentioned, um, you can see me tucking this in um, and I'm sewing this down. You'd see it as it's moving. Um, can you see it? So I've turned it by half an inch and I would tuck it in and then sew it downwards. And that's the finishing I mentioned that won't require me weaving the sides. And that's why I sewed it on the right side and not on the wrong side. So I'm going to do the same thing as well for the right side. Let's quickly just... Um, do this i'm also going to be doing this for the shoulder which was why i sewed the shoulder that way as well so that um, there will be no need for weaving as well um on any part of the of the fabric aside from the round arm area So the same thing applies to the shoulder i'm turning this in this one is going to be um smaller than half an inch closing because i only used half an inch allowance upwards so it's going to be very very tiny you have to be 
very careful when folding this so that you don't have the material bulging out so you can see me that i just showed you what that looks like i would um do the other one for this other side and just finish this up and afterwards you can proceed to the next um line of action all right so um on the part i labeled right in my design um i'm going to place this piece of material which is about four inches wide and 26 inches long which is the measurement for um that part of the of the of the pattern also this is where the velcro tape will be sitting and that's why i made use of this piece of fabric to cover up that part so it doesn't show that i've sewn that on the fabric from the front part when you're looking at the uniform so i've sewn this down now i will just be trimming the excess on that part and downwards so that it aligns with the measurement and then i'll open up and then sew the joining on that same fabric that i just attached um to the uniform the reason i'm doing this is so that this secures properly on the fabric so that when i iron this out it flattens out easily for me So because I don't also want to weave that um, part, I will be flipping it very, very, very tiny. I'm going to be taking about half an inch away from that part. Um, you see how tiny I'm going to pick it so that um, it doesn't alter the measurement that I want to use. So I would sew this part down again um, before now attaching the Velcro tape. The Velcro tape is also something we call plaster here in Nigeria when buying in the markets but I mean that's the other name for it. So we're done with that now. The next thing I'm going to be doing now is to now attach this um, Velcro tape on the fabric. So let's quickly do that. I'm going to be attaching it very close to the, um, um, the line that has the, um, the joining between the fabric and the um the material that i used to um close up that part you see how closely i placed it not so far away from that joining but not too close so it doesn't show in front when this um, fabric or when the uniform is worn right so i'll just place it um very very close to that line but then when I flip over, I would ensure that however way I place it, it doesn't show in front. And the essence of this is, I mean, from the style, there was no use of any form of button. It was basically just um, plain and was just one button that was at the top part of the fabric, which is why um, we have to be as careful as possible so that um, there's no sewing showing in front and it just makes the finishing as neat as possible. So this is me um, placing on the fabric now to um, pin down and then sew it. So this tape has two sides, um, sewing the first side and then sewing the second side so it secures firmly on the fabric and we're good to go. I would now be, um, I mean you can see me sewing the second side, I will now be joining the tip, I mean closing up the tip of this of this fabric or of this um, top part of the, of the pattern. So let's close out the tip. Um, remember I mentioned that I took out one inch sewing allowance when cutting this on the fabric. So I'm flipping in by half an inch. So it's at the end of the day lands back to um, be one inch that I'll be taking away from the tip. So let's quickly just sew this. You can see how neat that part is. I mean the finishing on the part that has the tip 
um, like I mentioned plaster like we call it in Nigeria so you can see the finishing as well on the sides that won't make me need to weave this in any way um, so I'll just quickly just close up the tip so that we can move to other elements of this um, design So after doing that, the next thing I also did was to now close the tip of the um, left side of this um, uniform. So I'm closing the tip of this left side now so that um, we can proceed to other parts of or other elements of the design. So let's quickly close the um, tip of the left side. I mean the side in front that you can see. So I've closed that side now. I will now turn this over for you to see and um, this is what it looks like now you can see the right side and you can see the left side so we're going to now um, place the plaster or the velcro tape on the left side which is where um, the other part of this design will be sitting on so let me go to the ironing board and do this so i fixed this other part of the tape on this other side um so that when i place the other side on this it kisses it properly or let me permit me to use the word kiss so like i did on the right side i'm going to sew this tape on the left on the both on both lines that you can see on the velcro tape the velcro tape usually has two lines um Two double lines on the left and on the right so that's what i'm trying to do you can see that um, this is moving very smoothly as i'm sewing i'm removing the bobbin pins as well so i'll just quickly sew this down as well so that this secures firmly on that part of the fabric so let's quickly do this and then move to the other parts of this design so that's done now let's proceed to um, the sleeves so i'm going to be making use of a torn up sleeve um, you can see me placing the flap on the wrong side so I'm going to sew down the flap on that side I'll do it for the left and for the right and then I would go to the ironing board to open this up so that I can iron out how um, how I mean iron out the fold that I want to achieve for the turn up I can't do this without the iron and that's why I decided to bring this to the ironing table so you can see me opening this up now so I'm going to use the iron to bend this by half an inch on that side before placing on that um, other part of the material and that's our um, turn up ready for us to sew i'll be cutting the excess also on that edge um, after i'm done sewing so let's go to the machine now and sew this down for the left and the right side of the sleeves so we're back on the machine now and we'll just sew this um, turn up sleeves You can also see that I had notched the center of this um, piece of material so that I can get the center point. Once I'm done, the same way I finish the sides of this uniform as well as the shoulder of this uniform, the same technique I'm also going to be using to close the sides of this sleeve because I do not want to weave the um, sides of the sleeves. I'm only going to be weaving the round arm of the sleeves. So I've sewn the turn up for the left and for the right. I will now be joining the sides on the right side so that I can do my um, by turning in for the finishing. Um, so I measured the round arm to be sure that it's accurate and measured the round sleeve. The round sleeve measurement I worked with is 16 inches divided by 2, that's 8 and that's what I marked on that line. So I'm going to now sew this downwards um, for the left and for the right side of the sleeves. Then trim the excess that I do not need so that I can also do that finishing that I mentioned. The one that I did for the sides of the uniform and also for the shoulder of the uniform. So after I'm done now, I'm going to now join the um, sleeves with the remaining part of the uniform, ensuring that everything sits accurately. And afterwards, we'll join or fix the pocket for this uniform as well as the neck area for the uniform. And then we'll proceed to uh, making the apron.
all right so this is ready and good to go now let's insert the pocket so the pocket measurement that i use from shoulder downwards i marked 8.5 inches and from that point i marked 6.5 inches um, away although i use 6.5 inches because and um, there's an extension if i remove the extension i go back to my normal 11 inches wide unfold i'll be taking out 3.5 inches from the tip of the material so because of the extra or additional three inches which is why i use 6.5 inches the pocket is also torn up so that's what i just joined i'm going to be using this design if you can remember this was what was in the style guide that i showed you so this is satin bridal satin shiny face that i cut and sewed like this um it's about three um inches wide but this one was showing two and something inches but it's three inches wide it's meant to be three inches wide and that's what i inserted in the pocket before covering up the turn up so i'll just show you what this turned out to be just watch me as i do this also i've ironed the sides so that it's easy for me to sew this on the part that i marked where the pocket will sit i iron the sides and also the bottom parts um taking in um one rather half an inch on all the sides so you can see that i placed that um piece of material into the turn up area and then i sewed this carefully i also ensure that when i'm now going to place this on the fabric to sew down i won't be sewing on that um part that has the bridal satin design right I left about small very very, very tiny um, measurements so that the machine can go just by the side and not run through the part that has a bridal satin so let's place this now let's place this our pocket on the uniform so that we can join the pocket to this piece of material so I've placed this down with the pins now and I'm going to now sew through all the way down All right, so um, let's quickly just sew this down. You can remember that I mentioned to you that that part that has bridal satin design is not sitting too close to the edge of the pocket so that the machine, when it runs through, will not sew on it. It's just a part of um, finishing so that the finishing is very, very neat. So you see what I'm doing with this now. I'm just trying to ensure that this is as flat as possible and um, all in shape before I begin to sew. So let's begin sewing. So after this, the next thing I did was to um, just sew down that part, I mean the right side upwards where we have the flap so that before I put the um, collar for this, it um, flattens out properly. Um, afterwards, I start placing the collar. You can see how I'm doing the collar. This is inwards first and this has been lined with paper stay so that it's as thick as possible and stands firmly. After doing this, I would now flip over, uh, right? So you can see that this is the wrong side. So I'll flip over now and then now turn in by half an inch and I'll begin sewing. So done sewing now, I will just trim out the excess on that side and then turn it in. Um, remember this bridal satin is also going to be sitting around the collar area. Um, so I'm going to be losing up what I had there and I will now pass the um, bridal satin inside. So it's um, from that point, so from that tip, it's 2.5 inches away from that part. So let's just quickly close up the tip first and then we insert that into it so you can see how tiny it is it has to be tiny when inserting so that it's as equal as what we have on the pocket area so let's close that up now um the way the collar also sits um we're going to be sewing all the way um from that point to the tip of the collar so that it flattens out which is also the design that we are following based on the illustration that we we had in the picture that i showed earlier so let's just sew that place down and when sewing also ensure that i mean it sews as flat as possible 
and uh, there you go so let's close or rather let's work on the apron so this is the apron the apron is 26 inches wide and 24 inches long but adding the flap now on the tip um it will make it about 25 inches um long or rather 25.5 inches long so this one that you can see me sewing is the rope for the apron which will say uh, stay at the tip of the apron i'm going to be doing the same i'll flip it inside out iron out and then close out both edges before i, I attach it to the apron at some point my um camera stopped recording i didn't realize that but i mean i will just show you what this looks like on the fabric what i'm doing is to join the pockets which you will not see see on the apron so this is what it looks like that flap upwards is what you can see i've attached the um rope as well to the apron i'm going to now sew this down on the machine so let's just sew the pockets down the technique i also use to sew the pocket is to use my iron to already flatten out the edges that i'll be sewing on so it's easy for me to just sew through on because this has already been flattened out with heat so um we're done with this now i'm going to be showing you what the final outlook looks like our apron and our chef uniform i hope this video was um very very educative for you if you have any questions um do not forget to leave them for me down below in the comment section and i will be taking your questions from you if you haven't subscribed now is a good time for you to click on that subscribe button it will make me happy do not forget to also share this video to all of your contacts um persons or your sewing um partners so that they can learn a thing or two um from this video so let me quickly show you now um what this our apron and our um uniform turned out to be you can see how i'm closing the tip of um the apron right so let's just show you or let me just show you what this turned out to be on the mannequin so this is the apron that we have um and this is a uniform this is the chef uniform sitting you can see the button that part will have the button hole and um the button attached to that so that it's easy for you to open up the button and open up the velcro um, tape and that's the pocket you can see the design sitting very pretty i'm going to um, be placing the um, apron on this now so you can see the um i mean better appreciate what this looks like i'm going to be removing from the dress room and now just be placing it on the mannequin so let me just quickly do that that do not forget to also watch all my tutorial videos other tutorial videos like how to cut and sew a bustier pattern how to cut and sew a corset with a basque waistline and garters so i'll just be dropping links here so you can watch from me to you it's bye bye keep, keep creating magic it's sent nightingale